Good morning, everyone. This is a wonderful day the Lord has made. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful outside. It's a day that we can really say that God has made this day just for us. We welcome you to Old Audubon. We welcome you to our 250th anniversary year. We welcome you to our service and we pray that you all would take part and be present today in our service. We are looking forward to the day that we are all present together, but until this day comes, until this time comes, join us virtually and join us together in prayer and praise for the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that this is a wonderful, absolutely outstanding day. It's a day that we are excited that you are here with us and we are here together. God, we praise you that this is an absolutely wonderful time that we are here in fellowship. God, as you're hearing your words today, Help us and remind us, God, that your word have you hidden in our hearts, that we may understand who you are and whose we are, that we may always shine forth your truth, and we would be the people that you have called us to be. We thank you for all of these things. In this precious name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the breaths of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. God of the blazing chariots, the whirling wind, the sacred silence. Listen softly to the confessions of our hearts. Create clean hearts in us. Renew right spirits within us. Shelter us within your presence. Sustain us by your Holy Spirit. Restore us to the joy of our salvation. Blazing, whirling, sacred God. Inhabit and transform our stories. Amen. Please join me in our opening hymn, which will be in a, uh, found in your United Methodist hymnals, number 195. Send your word.
O God, who makes all things new, new stars, new dust, new life. Take my heart, every hardened edge and measured beat, and create something new in me. I need your newness, God, the rough parts of me made smooth, the stagnant stirred, the stuck freed, the unkind forgiven. And then by the power of your spirit, I need to be turned toward love again. Amen and amen. So I was working for the video. Did you want me to share or, sorry? Yep, oh, I. One second. Yes. Good morning. This is our reading from the Old Testament this morning. It comes from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Good morning. I'll be reading the New Testament lesson. It'll be coming from Hebrews chapter 5 verse 5 through 10. In the same way, Christ did not take, unto, take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, you are my son. Today, I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Grace and peace for you this morning. We are coming to the end stretch, to the home stretch of Lent. But what I want to talk to you today is why it is important to have Jesus in your hearts. I want to use our 
major text from uh, Jeremiah, which is one of the most important, I believe, prophecies in the Old Testament, the prophecies of Jeremiah 31. This was written during one of the most challenging time during the nation of Israel. They were under siege of the Babylonians. Now they had had a little bit of help from Egypt, but it was not enough to save them. And in fact, if we continue to read, this is the time right after this, that they were taken captive. What, but right before that, Jeremiah had been thrown in a well in jail. But he spoke this prophecy that we heard in our reading today. He told them, paraphrasing, that Israel would not be consumed. That God would be their God and they would be God's people. and. God's laws, he would write in their hearts so that they never forgot him again. So that they didn't have to ask, so what does God know? What does God want? Because they would know themselves what God would want. This new covenant would not be based on merit. In other words, how good you were or how much you did or how much tithe you would give. But this new covenant would be based on a relationship with the living God. It would be so ingrained and part of the lies that everyone would know it. God told them that God would write their, his laws on their hearts and on their minds. The interesting thing about this prophecy is that the worst was still yet to come. Everything in their life would be turned upside down. Does it look like where we are now? Jeremiah told them though, to have hope. The Hebrew nation believed that they were God's chosen people. Not discounted that, they were God's chosen but only to be the seed of what was to come. They were to be the seed of the entire kingdom of God, not just Jews, but Gentile and everyone else would be part of the kingdom of God. That was the prophecy. Realize that when Jesus came, he came from a culture. He came from a culture. He came from the Hebrew culture that their father, his father, his father's father, and his father's father's father taught the laws to them. They told them what to do. They had laws about what to eat, how to eat, what to do, how to marry. Everything that is in their life, the Hebrew culture was taught to their children and their children's children. It didn't just start with Jeremiah, but Jeremiah uh, uh, promised them that if they would continue, that God would always be with them. We believe that sometimes that Jesus came out of nowhere, that when he was born, he was God, he was, but he had to learn just like we have to learn all of the songs, all of the thoughts, all of the uh, Mishraq, all of the scriptures, he had to even learn as a child. They had many things that they had to be taught. Even before they were 13 years old and they were circumcised, there were things that they had to know. One of the central beliefs, though, in the Hebrew, Hebrew nation, is that a Messiah was coming. This Messiah would free them from bondage, would, would save them not only from whoever had captured them, but would save them from themselves. What they didn't understand 
was the Messiah that they were waiting for was not necessarily a Messiah that they thought. They thought that he would come as a conquering king with chariots and with uh, swords and spears and people as they had conquered before. What they didn't understand was what God came to conquer was themselves and their hearts. God told them that one day that they would be free. The writer of the Hebrews reminds us that of this prophecy from Jeremiah. He states that Jesus came not only as a high priest with ornate trappings, but he came as a conquering king, as a conquering king. When we read in from Hebrews, he actually came as a son to his father. He came in submission. He came in obedience. He came even to the point of giving up his own life. The writer of, the, of Hebrews says that Jesus came with prayers, petition, tears, and fervent cries. The writer said that God heard him because of his obedience. And because of his obedience, God not only saved him, but was able to save all of us. He was intimately connected to his father, but his his culture also uh, taught him that the father whom he served was the father of us all. The laws of God were written in Jesus's heart from birth, but his earthly father and his mother also taught him the, the laws that he knew. You see, Jesus demonstrated that God's laws could be written in his heart. Now, God understands that we are fallible human beings. We're prone to go our own ways. We like to do what we like to do when we like to do it. We want what we want. But God has a plan for us. God has a plan for each and every one of us. In fact, our plan is written in our DNA. Think about it. However tall or short you are, how much hair you have or don't have, what you like to do, what you have a passion for is actually been pro programmed by God for you. You see, God knew you. God knew us. God actually had a plan for us even before you were born. Understand that God knew every circumstance, knew who your mother and father would be. God, God would knew that you would be in Maryland right now. So don't think that you're just a screw up that you are an oops or a mistake. Don't ever think that you have no worth because God knew and understand who you were and who you are, which is the reason God wants to write his love and his, and his purpose in your heart. God wants to know who and why you are. God wants you to know why you are just like you are, how you think like you think, what your friends are. Now, don't think that there aren't choices. There are choices that we all have to make. But God said that he would write his laws and his love, not only in our hearts, but in our minds, so that we may read it, we may memorize it, we may think about it, and we may be changed by God's law. You see, the reason that Jeremiah's prophecy is so important is that it is now written for all perpetuity that God promises to be with us and to keep us and guide us and lead us and teach us and do what we need to do. Don't think that you can't, that you can't understand or that you 
just don't have the ability because God understands your abilities and even people's perceived disability. If we are fortunate in life, we hear God early. And when we hear God early, we get a chance to answer that call early. And we can see and spend our young lives trying to work out what God has called you. But if you're like me, you may be well into adulthood before you answer that call of God, that still small voice. And when you answer that still small voice, recognize that God says you still have enough time to be who you are. We have a promise. And our promise is that God would write God's law on our hearts and God's purpose in our minds. So we don't have to guess when we answer. When the writer of Hebrews talks about Jesus being the priest after the order of Melchizedek, let me just tell you first why this is important as well. Melchizedek um, existed during the time when Abram was when Abraham was Abram, and he was fighting to get to where God told him to go. He had his cousin Lot with him. And Lot wanted to go into the green pastures. So he, he took off on his own way. But when he did that, somebody captured him and all of his people. Abram had to go and fight for Lot. And when he fought, fought for him, he was able to regain and capture and get him back along with all of his things. When he did, he met a king and priest call Melchizedek. When he met that king and priest, he blessed him. This is what is important. He blessed him. He recognized that Melchizedek, who was a king and priest of Salem, which was which the priest precursor, precursor of Jerusalem, was a priest of God. Melchizedek told him that God had blessed you. And so Abraham wanted to give tithes to Melchizedek. And, Mal and Abraham said, no, I won't take anything that is not mine, but the blessing that you have given me. Melchizedek was known, not known to have a father or mother in history. So when the writer of the Hebrews talks about Mac Jesus being a priest after the order of Melchizedek, what they were basically saying was he was a priest of God, but he was also a king and a ruler. So Jesus, when he came, he came first as a child. He came as a child who had to learn the culture, who had to learn the scripture, who had to learn who God was, even though he understood that God was his father. But in that scripture, in Hebrews, he says, I am your father. And Jesus began to understood that he was not only a son of God, but a priest of God and a king that is and will allow us to enjoy God's salvation. When Jesus was died and was buried and rose again, what he told us is, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. And when I come back, I'm going to leave you a comforter. And the comforter is going to remind you everything I've told you. But for now, you need to go preach the gospel into all the nations, telling them that Jesus, that God loves you. God loves everything about you and that same history that God would write his laws in your heart. We had the promise from Jeremiah. We had the fulfillment of the promise in Jesus. God understood 
that we couldn't figure out how to do it on our own self. So Jesus showed us how to live, how to love, how to be intimately connected to the Father, how to understand and live like Jesus lived. But then he said, you now go and do the same thing. God's word, do we hide in our hearts? God law, do we write in our hearts? God promised that he would come day, that he would come one day and fill us with himself. We don't have to ask the question anymore, does God really exist? We don't have to ask the question anymore, where are you, God? Because the Father sent his only begotten Son that we could understand and know who God is and live the life that Jesus lived. God understood who we are. We understand that Jesus was fully God and fully human. He laughed, he drank, he ate, he wept, he got angry, but he loved. He experienced all the human emotions that we experience. Yet Jesus was fully aware of who God's love is and God's care, God's emotions, and God's purpose and God's directions. He was fully aware of God's presence. So I tell you today, we have the benefit of these 66 books of the Bible. We had the benefit of reading the history. We had the history of reading our present. We had the benefit of reading what God has for us. The beautiful thing about having God's word written in our hearts is that we can pull it out whenever we need it. We can pull out God's word when we are having issues. We can pull out God's word when we feel like we're alone. When we need God, God is right here. This has been such a tough time for us. This has been a time where we have been separate. We long for hugs and we long for human contact. We long to be in our church again. We long to see and hear each other just sing and laugh, even if we're out of, out of tune. We long to be in fellowship with each other. The thing that I have to remind me and us is that we have the fellowship of God in our hearts. It's going to be so much sweeter when we understand that our fellowship of God never leaves and never walks away. And as we are coming back together again, our fellowship with each other will be so much taught tighter because of the fact that we have been apart. Won't you realize right now that you're only not you're not only a mistake or a throwaway or a goof, goof up. You are purpose filled. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You know what's right and what's wrong. You know what God has called you to do. You have heard the whispers of God in your ears because God's laws are written in your heart. And guess what? If you don't or are not sure, we had the benefit of each other in community. We had the benefit of God's word written in our books that we can read. We had the benefit of fellowship with each other. We had the benefit of the wisdom of the elders. Understand that God's promise is eternal. God answers and floods us with himself. God directs you, keeps you, hugs you, guides you in a way that you should go. The writer of the Hebrews says that Jesus was made perfect, perfect, which means complete and mature by what he endured. And because of that, 
God allows us to have salvations for many. We can use this guidepost of Jesus to help others and direct others to God. Others are going to follow you because of the light of God that's in you, because of the love that's in you, because of the word that's in you, because you are part of a bigger thing, which is the kingdom of God. Love God today. Hear God today. Reach out for what's inside of you, the words of God that are written in your heart. When you forget, there are songs that will come to your mind that will remind you. There are scriptures that you can memorize that will help you. But more importantly, even when you just don't know and you get overwhelmed, remember that God loves you more than anything. Reminds, remembers who you are have chosen you to be great, have chosen you to do what only you can do, and that God requires that you share that love with others so the kingdom of God can be expanded by one more person. I love you. Jesus loves you. The Father loves you. More importantly, love yourself. Amen and amen. And please join me in a response to the sermon, which will be near to the heart of God, found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 472. is now the time where we respond to God's word by our faithful giving. As you can see, we have our uh, online at old Audubon UMC 250.org. You can gladly donate and we so appreciate you because you are such faithful givers. You have given throughout the pandemic and you continue to allow us as Old Audubon to reach us out, reach out to the community and to be in fellowship with those who are in need and even with ourselves. 
we thank you very much for your uh, continued giving and your continued offering. Understand that the Lord loves a cheerful good giver. And the word cheerful is hilarious, happy, and excited to give. And we appreciate that you are all of that. Amen. Amen. It's now time for our announcements. Continue to pray for those on our prayer list. Continue to uh, print it out and pray throughout the week, not just today. We have had many, many prayers answered. So recognize that God does hear our smallest whisper. So continue to pray for those on our prayer list. For our uh, virtual worship service, we will have an announcement after church. So please um, stay after church about um, uh, what we're going to do on our plans for virtual wor worship. Um, but until we are completely um, in person, you continue. Um, you continue to. You can continue to give online with the link that is here, that's uh, Old Ottomore, Old Audubon UMC 250. Um, and again, we thank you so much for your faithful giving. We have our noonday prayer. We thank you for those who have um, um, called in. The prayer is, is free. Um, the access number is there. It's, it is there every week if you ever want to know where it is. I sit there and I wait for you and we do pray together. And when you pray, when you ask for prayers, that prayers is on our list and we'll continue to pray throughout the week for those things that you we will pray together. And I appreciate that some of you have called and prayed for me and that's been a real blessing. Um, we all are in the need of prayer. And so we appreciate these prayer warriors who continue to pray with us and for us and together, we will finally, um, as we come to the throne of grace, that we can be together um, with God's prayer and with um, God's ear hearing what we have to say. So thank you so much for the prayer lines and continue to access and pray for us at noon. Our first quarter mission is the Pro Bono Resource Center of Maryland. Um, it does provide um, and trains attorneys and uh, for legal issues for vo as volunteers. Um, they play an important role in rent, rent court and training attorneys to provide representation for ev evictions and other things that are needed in the legal realm. So please, as you're giving, to give a little bit and designate the Pro Bono Research Resource Center of Maryland. We, at every quarter, um, we are in uh, fellowship with these nonprofit centers. And for the first quarter, it is the Pro Bono Resource Center. For the gifting for Old Audubon, if as you're shopping on Amazon, Designate Old Audubon Baltimore United Methodist Church as your uh, charity. It costs you nothing, but it allows you to be able to give to the church passively without having to, everything that you buy, a percentage of it goes to the church. And we do appreciate all your giving, um, even as you um, are, are shopping in, old, in uh, Amazon. And we thank you. 
Our Lenten Bible study is still there for uh, fear of the other. We are down to the wire. So we only have two more uh, dates um, to come up. Um, and we are finishing April 1st. It's really been a fruitful uh, study as we've been able to figure out who the other is and to love the others as God would have us love. Amen. Um, there are um, volunteers who are needed to feed hungry people. Uh, we're still working out the details of, uh, uh, of how to volunteer. But the food bank and the movable feast are now opening up to volunteers. Um, so if you are interested in volunteer, by, by volunteering, please let us know. This is something that we do. It allows us to be who we are in Christ. It allows us to be in mission and ministry. So please, if you want to uh, volunteer, we'll have more information for you. Um, about the Maryland Food Bank and about the movable uh, feast. And at the very bottom, where we have the reopening news, we have a task force that meets regularly to discuss the situation and what it means to old Audubon. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. We're almost there. We're almost um close to resuming in-person services in the coming months. Uh, we also um, want you to know that we are encouraging you to continue to fellowship with us um, virtually until that time, but we are so, so, so close. Um, if you are um, interested in getting vaccinated at the bottom, I have, um, connected with vaccine hunters who can, if you have a hard time and are eligible and would like to get vaccinated, please let me know. This is my email here. You can write it down. It's ievangel, it's ievangel at aol.com. Don't judge me. I know I'm old, no problem, but it works still well. Um, and just email me about getting vaccinated. And when you email me, I'll give you the information of how to connect with the vaccine hunter. Um, several of our um, church, church members have gotten vaccinated through this way. Um, several of our older members have gotten vaccinated through this way. But all of you who are eligible and would like to get vaccinated, please contact me and so that we can get you the vaccine. The more people that are vaccinated, the closer we are to coming to in-person worship. We also, at the end of the services, um, we'll have a, um, a question and answer time with Nick, um, who is our um, re-entering well uh, committee chair and with myself uh, so that you can ask all the questions you want to ask about when we're going to open and what we're looking for and what we're going to do. Um, and one um, announcement that's not here, but we want you to know, is that uh, Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, we will be uh, transmitting in the sanctuary. We will also have palms in our fences, so people can come and pick up the, the palms on Palm Sunday and also be able to um, recognize that we will be in our sanctuary we will be, I'm sorry, we will be um, videoing on our, in our sanctuary on Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. So that will be uh, just to let you know that we are getting really, really close to the point where we can all be together in our sanctuary. So that is the end of our announcements, unless there are any others. That you are greater than we understand vaster than we Im imagine, more amazing than we can put into words. So with awe and deep gratitude, we pray and please unmute, unmute, unmute yourself as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Lord, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. 
kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, done on earth, earth as, it as it is in heaven. heaven. Our daily bread. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread. Daily bread. And, forgive and forgive us our trespasses as it is those who trespass against us. And it is not temptation. But deliver us from evil. And the glory and the, and the, power, the power and the glory, and the glory, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Most to hear everybody. And our closing hymn will be found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 671, Dismiss Us With Thy Blessing, 671. Before we do the benediction, I do want to encourage you to stay afterwards because Nick has an update for us. And for those of us, those of you who have questions about what's going on and where we're going and what is our plan, we really want you just to stay a little while um, to be able to hear it and ask questions. And or if you need a vaccine, or if you um, need to be connected or have questions about that, we again ask you to, to stay afterwards and we'll be able to ask questions and connect you to a vaccine hunter. Amen. May God create in you a clean heart, transformed heart, a heart that knows and seeks and loves the justice and mercy of the Lord. May you accept the gift of salvation, not your personal protect possession to be coveted, but his work accomplished in the destruction of sin on the cross of Jesus Christ. And may you humble yourself before the Lord, coming before him with a broken spirit and a contract heart, receiving from his hand great compassion and unfailing love. Go in peace and grace to love and serve the Lord. Amen and amen. amen.